here's my question and here's what we're going to talk about. Why, why does it take so bloody long to get what we want? Or if we're in a cycle that just is not good or it's not where we want to be or where we want to go, why do we circle around like we're in a washing machine and we just keep going around and around and around? Like, why does it take so long? <sighs> hey guys, it's me, Ash. Good morning, good day, good night. It is very early where I live here in Colorado and I'm making you a video first thing in the morning because, well, we're gonna have some tea together because I made a video a couple days ago titled how to get out of a negative cycle and it blew up on YouTube and the comment section blew up and this video is gonna start to pull apart why does it take so long? Some of you were saying, hey, I've been in this cycle, Ash, for 10 years, three years, five years. One gentleman said 20, 23, 28 years. If you take a look right here, I'm gonna introduce this. Now, my sense is this gentleman, we're gonna call him John, I don't know, I don't, don't recall his name. John was really frustrated by what I said in that what I was saying is life is not working against us. But if you've been in a cycle for any period of time, Pick your, pick your, you know, three years, five years, 10 years for him. That's a really long time. So first thing I just want to say, if you're watching this and you've, you've been working to change your life and to make progress and to have the things you want and to create a better experience for yourself, your family, your communities. First thing I just want to say is thank you so much. I really appreciate your desire and need to have a different experience. Now, if you are feeling frustrated, hopeless, helpless, ab abandoned, I'm not sure if that is something that you have felt in your process. I know for myself, now in the video that I shared with you, actually I'll pop it right here, how to get out of a negative cycle, I shared my own struggle with this. So for about 10 years, I've had this nagging, belief that I can't have what I want. Towards the end of this cycle, which shifted about a week ago, oddly enough, I felt abandoned by life. I felt here I am working so hard to affect positive change and to help you all. And my needs were not being met. I wasn't, I did not feel supported in the way that I thought I should be supported. So maybe you're having a similar experience, I'm not entirely sure, but I wanna kinda pull this apart with you and offer you a variety of things that might help explain why this happens and to give you some tools to work through it if you have hit a wall. If you feel like, you know what, life, I can't do this anymore, you suck. <laughs> I need some tea though. And I would take my sweet ass time on this video because, you know, we need this. We really, really, really need this. So first thing I wanna say, thank you for being here. Again, my name is Ash and the success of this channel in the last week is confirmation that cycles can shift. So if you've been in a negative cycle and you want to experience something different for yourself, I'm gonna use this channel and the recent success and your participation and engagement with me and in this community as proof. This is proof. Now, I wanna take your time today and, and we're gonna lay this all out and I'm gonna offer you the best tools that I have in my toolbox so that you can start applying it to your life and you can start to see the shifts even if they're really small, but you can start to see some shifts for yourself. So how I work, I should probably frame this. I am very spiritual and intuitive, lead from the heart. And then there's a part of me that absolutely loves science and the brain and neurology, and that's my professional training. And so what you get is kind of a mashup, sort of the esoteric heart feeling mindfulness piece. I'm also a mindfulness teacher. And then you get the like the stuff that's actually grounded in science, like how does the brain work? What's actually going on? And sometimes it's just kind of this mashup. So we're gonna lead with the heart first. For me to give you the best of what I think that can help you through whatever you're experiencing is I, I need a little time. Imagine it's like a puzzle and we're gonna start to put all the pieces together, but you won't see the full puzzle unless you get all the pieces together and that just requires a little time. So if you wanna make a cup of tea, 
Uh, what am I drinking? Black tea. I wish I was in England. I love England, but I'm not. I live in America. Okay, back on track. Okay, so for more, maybe more of the esoteric mindful piece, there seems to be two timelines. There's our timeline, the things that we want for ourselves, and how fast we want that stuff to happen. And then there's life's timeline. Life has its own agenda. Life has a master plan that is usually way more intelligent or sophisticated than our plan. And sometimes those timelines don't match up, meaning the things that we want for ourselves and what life wants for us, they don't match up. Okay, let me let me bring back in John here. Now again, at first I was like, oh, John's being spicy. Look at this. And then I was like, hang on a minute, Ash. How we do things around here and how I, the stance I want to hold with you is anything that is really any challenge in life. I think the more that we turn into it with curiosity and compassion, that is an extremely uh, profound learning state versus shame, judgment, fear. So, so then I looked at this again and I was like, John, man, that's 28 years is a really long time to feel like it's not going to work out for you. So I want to talk about this. So John has his own timeline. For John, 28 years is a really, really long time to be cycling around whatever he has going on. Now, I don't know the specifics, but life's timeline is like, well, 28 years. Now, I'm going to use myself as an example. Do you guys notice that? Have you ever noticed that? We recently moved into the house and we took off the electrical plates. What do you do? I have a funky office. I don't care. That's not, that's not why we're here need more tea. Okay. So this channel and you all, I mean, this channel's going bananas is proof that cycles can change. And I'm going to share with you the specific tools that I used to help myself shift out of a pretty severe experience of, I can't have what I want. Now it was most amplified maybe the last three years, but I would say the last 10 years, this for me has been like, um, like a thorn in my side. Now I will say talking about this in the way that we are, meaning all of us here on YouTube, and now I have tens of thousands of people paying attention and, uh, it's a little vulnerable and I'm not going to lie about that. And yesterday I was like, Oh my God, I can't do this. I have to pull the channel. This is way too vulnerable. And what you guys don't know about me is I'm actually a really shy person. As a little kid, I was so painfully shy, like would hide behind all, all in any family member. I'm actually getting a little teary eyed about it because this is, again, this is, I can feel it. Okay. So for the last five years specifically, I had deep in my heart and my soul that I wanted to start a YouTube channel. And that actually what I want to share with you is this piece of paper that was where Ashley wrote down all of the hopes and dreams. I can't remember when I wrote this, but it's quite old. Here's what I wanted. I wanted to create a YouTube channel. So this was pre three months ago. So an insanely awesome and unique, cool YouTube channel that surpasses what I thought was possible. Number two, to create beautiful work to open people's hearts and to lead humanity forward. Number three, to lead with heart and stance for life, the earth, and for humanity. Okay, so to, to want really beautiful things for yourself and to have things that just seem to work against that, forces, life, beliefs, like there's a, like a variety of stuff that sometimes it's like planets or, you know, like magnets, they just, they will not, they will not go together. It's like they push apart. So what do we do about this? Why does it take so long for those magnets to be able to come together? Okay, I want to read you something else. I'm telling you, we're being vulnerable here. Please be kind. Okay. In that video I shared with you, I'll pop it down in the comment section. It's the video that is popping on my channel, but I was talking about how for me, in the depths of my dark night of the soul, which over the last three years was the most intense, but five years, 10 years, this, the practice of writing, what I was feeling, what I was going through. Now, I wanna to read to you what I wrote on October 31st. Today's November 21. Now these videos will live on for many, many years, but you can do the math. That's just a handful of weeks. Now, 
Let me preface this by saying this channel is not like Ashley's diary. I'm not just here to kind of kvetch and, but I, but the reason why I'm sharing all this personal stuff, again, it's proof that what I'm going to share with you is impactful. It is grounded in science. It is helpful. It, it absolutely has the potential to shift your experience and your pattern. Now I'm not, I'm going to spare you all the details, but on October 31st, I wrote, I'm at the very end of my rope. If you want me to do this work, I'm going to need some help. Uh, I'm done. I'm about to shut this whole thing down, meaning my work and I've been doing this for 15 years. I don't feel taken care of. I feel abandoned, so on and so forth. Okay. So let's talk about, let's kind of shift gears and talk about some things that you can try and apply in your own life to help shift whatever is most sticky, owie, challenging, frustrating for you. Now here's, imagine there are kind of rules to the game. And I say this kind of cheeky, of course, but more tea. Life will not change unless we show up and we do the work. And that's the reality of how I teach. And that's the reality on this channel is you have to put in the time. With that said, if you have been putting in the time and you still like you're getting the same results, like John for 28 years has been really stuck in a particular cycle from over here, I'm like, Ooh, what's going on for John? What is creating John's sustained experience. And this is going to lead to a major teaching point from over here. If I was in the same room with John, or if we were on a call, I'd ask him some questions and I'd be like, Hey John, tell me about your experience. Like what's going on for you? And what would someone have to believe? Do you notice the word believe in order to have this experience? Now, the reason why I am, so what I want to introduce to you now is this concept that beliefs are what sustain most of our experience and most beliefs are unconscious. Like it's just sort of how life is now for myself, having a decade with this nagging corrosive belief of, I can't have what I want. Like I felt it and I could articulate what I was feeling, but it was so baked into my, just who I was. And this is, this is the thing about unconscious beliefs is that they're unconscious and they're very powerful and they're largely responsible for the experience that we are having or are not having. Okay. So what you could do for yourself as a tool, just to start getting curious about what is going on in, in support of making the change that you want in your life, you could get a piece of paper and you could write down like, what is the unwanted experience that you're having? So like the, the thing that the consistent experience, the cycle, like what's going on for you, more tea. And then you can ask yourself in your process, what might someone believe in order to have this experience? And that's going to start to work to elicit some of the beliefs that could be sustaining an unworkable situation. Now, here's the thing about beliefs. It is, if there was a, a lane of expertise, that's what I do. I do belief change work, but in a way that is very respectful because I don't want to go into it on this video, but there are other videos I actually should make. I'll make a playlist that is specifically about beliefs. Beliefs are association that our brain made when we were just little tiny people. Hey, take a look at this. That's small ash. I'm about, I think I'm about two or three there, right? And so I'm sharing this with you because our, so from zero to three, three years old, that's when most of the imprinting is happening in terms of our belief system and our belief architecture. Like that's all, I wouldn't say all, most of what we believe to be true about ourselves in the world is getting laid down when we're just this big. So, so we want to work with beliefs with great respect. Yes, they are incredibly powerful. Yes, they can suck. Yes, they're annoying, all that stuff. Absolutely. But when I'm working with you to do the belief change work, I'm considering this little one. I'm considering what you had going on and we work to respectfully revise and update what 
you may have outgrown. Okay, so to kind of bring it together, so if you're wanting to get out of a cycle that seems to have been going on, and again, you fill in the blank, like how many years, how many days, how many weeks, three years, five years, 10 years seems to be a common theme with you all. So I'm very curious about that. And that was true for me too. Like what about the 10 year cycle? Okay, so we're talking about beliefs. Um, well, I wanna share this metaphor with you. You may notice I offer metaphors. They're a good teaching tool. Okay, John there, 28 years has been stuck and he's super frustrated. He wants to throw knives at life. Okay, cool, just don't throw them at me. John's sustained experience of things not working. So imagine it like this, you have a gardener and a gardener has this masterpiece garden and that garden now has a bunch of weeds and, and like we're, it's just, it's not, no, it hasn't been tended to, right? And John has two tools to use. One is super rusty and gave him tetanus and the other one doesn't have a handle and the tip is broken. John's probably gonna have a really hard time turning that garden back into the masterpiece that he wants. Now the masterpiece is John's life. But if I were to give John, I'm making this up as we go, 10 tools, uh, maybe not an L file. Let's put this cat in, he's pretty cute. So if I were to give John 10 new tools that were very, very specifically designed to support John's work and um, effort, in turning this garden over into something that is more useful for him, prettier, whatever, these are gonna be way more effective than these. He may just have outgrown these and that's fine. They did their service. John just probably needs better tools. Ugh, guys, see that's what old tools can do to you. I mean, talk about a metaphor. Old tools can get messy. They make life weird. They make life hard, gross. I didn't plan that. Okay, so I hope that makes sense so far. It could just be, it's not life is turning against us and life is, you know, trying to make us suffer. It's we could just, we just may have outgrown the things that we kind of acquired as little people and it's just time for some new tools. And that's, that's where I come in. And that's why this channel I think is gonna be so insanely popular is I just wanna teach you. Like if I could unzip this, and take my brain out and be like, guys, these are some of the coolest tools I have spent my professional career learning and studying and practicing on myself, that'd be pretty rad. So I'm gonna do the best I can to make that happen. So this is where you're gonna, we're gonna shift more into the like scientific, you know, my professional training. I'm gonna ask you some questions. So if I were to give you tools, or start to give you tools. The first one is you can write down what is the unwanted experience that you're having that seems to just keep going on and on and on and on and on. You can write that down on a piece of paper and then you can follow it up with the question and what would someone have to believe in order to have that experience? And that question is gonna to start to elicit from you the beliefs that could be sustaining that unwanted experience. Now, if I were to take it a step further, I'm gonna ask you a question. Let's imagine that you did not have the challenges and difficulties and that you were not stuck, like everything was going fine for you. Pause. I try not to slurp. That drives my brain. Okay, so let's imagine you didn't have the challenges and the difficulties and that you were not stuck. Just breathe that in for a second. The follow-up piece is what might have been some of the really important learning and experiences or really important encounters in life, like what would you have missed out on? Now I know that's kind of a chunky question and you're probably getting to know me as I ask questions, high quality questions. Some call me the queen of questions, I'll take it. Let me say it again. So let's imagine that you did not have the challenges, the frustration, you were not stuck, right? What might have been some of the really important learnings, experiences, or really important encounters with people in life that you would have missed out on? So that could be something that you put some attention on. Here's the thing about making the change or having the change that you want. It's gonna require effort. It's gonna require time. This channel is not a bunch of smoke and mirrors. Like, let's just manifest anything. Like, manifestation is amazing. And you gotta do 
you, sometimes you just, just like this garden metaphor, sometimes you need to get in the garden and you need to pull up some weeds. Sometimes you need to chop up some wood. Sometimes you need to rebuild a path. Sometimes you just need to put in the work and put in the effort, but where attention goes, so does power. Okay, so I hope this all makes sense. Does it make sense? So I would say in closing, my friends, I'm gonna ask you to do a couple things. One, please approach this with mo more compassion and curiosity, even if it's just 5%. Because again, you may not know how to approach things with compassion and curiosity, but my hope through this channel and being with you all and teaching you all this cool stuff is let's frame this as a learning journey and as much fun we can have because fun is a very high learning state. Shame, fear, judgment, anger, that stuff can shut down the main learning center of the brain and it can just be harder to work with, which is fine. If that's your experience and that's true for you, okay. But I'm gonna invite you to practice, even if it's 5% more and you don't know how to do it, let's just practice together. Curiosity and compassion. We turn into things that are hard, tricky, challenging, not working, and just be like, okay, I'm not getting my way. What's this all about? I just want to say that there are tools available to support you with the greatest amount of respect to update and revise the beliefs. Because, oh, I didn't say this. Here's the thing about beliefs. Beliefs are meta, not meta like Facebook and Instagram. Meta as in greater than. I talk about this in other videos, so please dig around the library because I, I go more into detail. But beliefs create or are responsible for, now let me say that again, Beliefs drive behavior, thoughts, feelings, and actions. Beliefs are meta to everything else. So for John, I'm going to use John again. Um, again, my big curiosity is what are what are what is John's belief structure? What are the beliefs he has about himself and the world that are helping create or sustain this unwanted experience? And that's the truth. This guys, this is science. This is that. What I just said right there, that is coming from a place of profound science and research and study and trial and error. And that's just not just kind of a one-off opinion. Beliefs are unconscious, most of them, yet probably responsible for 95% of our experience. Like where's our user manual? If, if someone were to ask me as I exit this life, like, what didn't you like? Like, let's review life. I'd be like, you know what? We didn't get a user manual. That sucks. That's what I got for you today. I'm very curious what you think. So, oh, please, if you'll allow me to ask you to do a couple things. One, if you like this video, can you subscribe? If you don't like it, don't subscribe, but please subscribe. A lot of the viewers are not subscribed to the channel and it helps me it helps the channel, which helps me help you. And if you know someone in need, someone having a very challenging time, which I think there are a lot of people right now, look at the comment section, look at how many views these videos are getting. Please share this with someone who is in need, someone who just needs a hand. And here's what's cool about how I feel about being able to teach about this now we don't have to master everything. We don't have to get everything perfect and right to be able to turn around and reach our hand back to someone else and offer help. Yes, I feel like my own challenge of the 10 year cycle and I can't have what I want, I that was my number one priority. I had a coach, I was doing my work, right? And I have made a lot of progress very recently and I'm able to turn a hand around and say, let's try this out. Let's get really curious about this. And here are some things that you can try for yourself. And if you know someone that is in need of a hand, please share this video with them. You can help me in that positive ripple effect. This is your friend, Ash. Thank you for being here. You all are my confirmation that it's possible. The change is possible without fail. The, what you want is possible. It just might mean you need some new tools, maybe. Thank you for being here. My fullest, greatest gratitude. I really appreciate it. Good day, good night, wherever you live in the world. I will see you in the comment section and I'm gonna go get more caffeine. Goodbye.